want to tell you a little bit about our newly published paper in bioessays and it's all about heritability analyses including where the causes of complex traits are distributed in the human genome so let's look at some results and then i'll get on to the methods that are the main focus of the paper so here we've taken 24 functional annotations of different uh, genome regions uh, and the green bars at the top show the enrichment of heritability by in each category. So for example, for this conserved category, which is about two and a half percent of the genome, uh, it's highly enriched, about sevenfold enriched for heritability. Uh, the other ones you, you might expect coding, five prime UT, UT, uh, transcript and start sites, three prime UTR and so on. They're all enriched, but for many other categories, they might be less enriched than you, than you would have thought. And of course, some are depleted for heritability. But what's also interesting are these purple bars. So they reflect the contribution of each category after adjusting for the other categories. So conservation is still a very strong indicator of, of, of heritability, even after adjusting for other categories. But for example, three prime UTR is no longer significant here. So that says three prime UTR sites are enriched for heritability, um, but it's not just because they're three prime UTR sites, it's because they overlap with other categories. And for DHS, there's about a 70% enrichment of heritability, but the parameter estimate is negative, which says that DHS alone indicates less heritability than would otherwise be the case and significantly less, as you can see here. So there's tons of interesting results like this in the paper and, and similar results have been published in the past. So why did we publish our paper? Well, there's two fundamental problems in these kinds of analyses. There's a too many predictors problem, a classic statistical problem. We've got tens of millions of SNPs much bigger than the sample size. Uh, and so we can't estimate a parameter for every SNP. But in addition to that, because of linkage disequilibrium, we can't disentangle where to allocate causal effects uh, to uh, across correlated SNPs. Um, and, and for example, if they're in different functional uh, categories, we might be allocating it to the wrong category. Now, there's no perfect solution to these problems. There are good workarounds that I'll explain in a moment. But our, uh, a major part of our contribution is that we think that many previous heritability analyses have been suboptimal in the way they've dealt with these problems. And as a result, previously published results are, are inaccurate. So I'll set out the statistical model um, in a graphical demonstration here. Now, don't worry too much about the details here. I'm not going to go into here. But the important thing is that we deal with the too many predictors problem, like many other people do, but in a shrinkage regression way, in effect, we treat the effect size parameters as random variables. And because we can't estimate them individually, we don't care too much about them. We just extract one feature. Uh, because the sign of the beta is arbitrary, it just depends on the allele coding, um, it's, it can be assumed to be symmetric about zero, and therefore its variance is the important thing. And with the sort of standardization which is normally done, the variance turns out to be the expected heritability of the SNP. So we model the expected heritability, and therefore we call it a, a, a heritability model in terms of a number of parameters indicated here. A is just a regression intercept. It was introduced to deal with population structure, but actually we've shown that it, it performs poorly in this role. Really important is the alpha parameter, which is the relationship between minor allele frequency, MAF, and effect size. So alpha equals zero means no relationship between those two, and that's interpreted as corresponding to selective neutrality. But as alpha gets more negative, that corresponds to stronger and stronger purifying or negative selection. Now, for historical reasons, because statisticians like to standardize, many analyses have implicitly assumed alpha equals minus one. And we've shown that this is a terrible fit to data, nowhere near being uh, accurate. And so that's a major reason why many results have been, have been inaccurate. The final category of uh, parameters is these tau's, which are the, uh, the effect size parameters for the annotations that we saw with the purple bars in the previous slide. So once we've set up the model correctly, we actually just, it's just fitted you using regression methods. It's quite easy, computationally fast. Um, where do we get at the end? Well, the single SNP est heritability estimates are still imprecise, but we can sum them to get accurate heritabilities for regions, even when very small, much less than 1% of the genome. Now, uh, many previous models have not set up the, this uh, the, the correctly. And um, as a result, for example, they're focused on details of the prior distribution for the beta J that just don't matter. We can't estimate them, so details of the prior don't matter. 
And typically they have assumed the uniform heritability model uh, with alpha equals minus one, which as I mentioned gives a terrible fit to real human data. Uh, and uniform heritability is not right. We know lots of things about SNPs that affect your, the expected heritability. And, in, and modeling those really gives a substantial improvement in the estimates. So our modeling framework improves on the previous models. Uh, once again, there's no perfect solution. It's got flexibility to incorporate new and better heritability models, for example, as better genome annotations come along. And at the end of the day, we get to better understanding of the genetic contribution to traits and also where causal effects reside in the genome and better predictions. So I encourage you to read the paper and thanks for your attention.